My name is Dale Gardner. Organ failure and the need for transplantation remains high in all nations. Unmet need can lead to the death of those on the transplant waiting list or commercially driven transplantation, which is to the detriment of both donors and recipients. Although international resolutions and declarations have called upon each nation to strive towards self-sufficiency in organ donation and transplantation, to date, no nation has achieved this ambition. Donation rates vary across the Commonwealth from zero in some nations to 25 per million population in Malta. We believe that by using the historical ties and established relationships of our Commonwealth citizens and governments, progress can be made through the Commonwealth nations working together to share knowledge and expertise around organ and tissue donation and transplantation. That is why NHS Blood and Transplant, who are responsible for organ donation and transplantation in the United Kingdom, are developing the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding between supporting Commonwealth nations to lead to the sharing of knowledge and expertise in organ donation and transplantation. Our ambition is to launch the Memorandum of Understanding around the time of the Commonwealth Games being held in July 2022 in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. The Commonwealth Games provides a unique opportunity to promote organ donation and transplantation, which could lead to the commencement or increase in this life-saving area of medicine across the Commonwealth. To be very clear, this memorandum is designed to provide a framework whereby Commonwealth nations may share their knowledge and expertise in organ and tissue donation and transplantation. It is not for the transportation of any organ, donor or recipient between nations and carries no legal or financial obligation to any supporting Commonwealth nation. It's an opportunity to share education materials, guidelines and policies and create a network across the Commonwealth nations of supportive experts. This is not the first MOU or Memorandum of Understanding in organ and tissue donation and transplantation between Commonwealth nations. I have seen the first-hand benefit that came from a previous successful MOU between NHSBT and Mohan Foundation of India. It was in teaching and mentorship, self-funded sabbaticals, and even in app development. There are many benefits that might arise for Commonwealth nations in joining the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding. It can expand and support existing successful programs. It might provide an opportunity to explore the potential for commencing transplantation in countries where it doesn't exist. It can support progress even in those countries where organ transplantation exists to higher levels, but where there is continued unmet need in more ethnically diverse communities. Importantly, it can protect vulnerable Commonwealth citizens against illegal and unethical transplantation. It would provide organ donation and transplantation practice that is in keeping with World Health Organization principles and standards. It can save and transform the lives of patients in need of transplantation. Birmingham Commonwealth Games in July 2022 provide the perfect opportunity to launch the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding as the Commonwealth comes together to celebrate life. Birmingham has got a strong history of supporting organ donation and transplantation. In 2018, Birmingham was awarded Transplant Sports first ever Donor City Award in recognition of the city's commitment. Already, we have made substantial progress towards the Tribute to Life MOU we have created a project board, which I chair, and a UK advisory panel chaired by Baroness Finley from the UK House of Lords. The project has received active support across the Commonwealth from Australia and Canada, Barbados and Nigeria, Mauritius, Sri Lanka, Guyana, and many other countries represented on the project's 
International Advisory Panel. If you would like to know more or support the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding, please visit the project's webpage, which can be... at www.odt.nhs.uk Of course, once the MOU is signed, your assistance will be needed in creating implementation groups which deliver the ambitions of this worthy project and are the keys to success. Together, through the historical ties and established relationships that unite us in the Commonwealth, we can do more to share knowledge and expertise around organ and tissue donation and transplantation, which will result in many lives saved. Please support us in launching the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding during the Commonwealth Games being held in July 2022 in Birmingham. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. How are we all? Oh, you're a bit quiet to start with, aren't you? Has it been a long week? Has it? <laughs> well, welcome to the Commonwealth Tribute to Life. It's great to see so many familiar and new faces here this evening. Uh, we do want a bit of audience participation this evening. It may have been a long week. But it's less than a week until Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. <laughs> Definitely something to celebrate. Definitely. And we get to celebrate that and other successes this evening here in this beautiful setting of Edgebaston Cricket Club. Now, uh, if the team that were playing earlier on hadn't lost so quickly, you would, have still, you would have still seen them playing out the window. Instead, you get to see the beautiful cricket ground outside, but it's empty. Um, I'm, I'm told it was a very quick game. Even when I arrived at four o'clock, it was over. So, <laughs> so uh, I feel sorry for the poor supporters, never mind the team. Okay, distingu distinguished guests, friends, and those watching across the Commonwealth live as we stream this evening as well. It gives me enormous pleasure to welcome you to this Commonwealth Tribute to Life inaugural ceremony this evening. As I said, tonight we're here in Edgebaston Cricket Ground in Birmingham, United Kingdom, one week before the opening ceremony of the Birmingham Commonwealth Games 2022. <laughs> You're picking it up now, you know the cues, don't you? <laughs> we mark our own beginning. 
the formal start of a five-year memorandum of understanding between Commonwealth nations to share knowledge and expertise in organ and tissue, tissue donation and transplant. Oh, I'll try that again. Uh, tissue donation and transplantation. Uh, I'm going to be your host. My name is Phil Oldershaw. I'm going to be with you to guide you through this evening's uh, guest speakers and entertainment. We've got some fantastic entertainment coming up for you. And uh, on the way here this evening, I was just thinking this is the second uh, Commonwealth event that I've been to this week. Uh, on Tuesday, I was at the Institute of Directors uh, event, and it was the Commonwealth event taking place at the Grand Hotel. And I thought, what's the similarity between uh, those events? Well, firstly, they've got Commonwealth in the title, so that's a, a great start. Uh, and then I was thinking about this evening and the tribute to life and organ donation. And one of the people that I met on Tuesday doing the guest talk was Roger Black, MBE. Who remembers Roger Black, the athlete? 15 medals under his belt, gold, silvers, bronze, Olympian, Commonwealth, and so much more. And he was a delightful gent and looked very young for his age, I must say. Um, and I was thinking about the fact that many of the uh, medals that he won was for the baton race. Did anybody ever see the baton race? Yeah, very legendary, you know, and he showed us a video the other night. And I was thinking, actually, there is a great connection to this evening because the baton race is a bit like organ transplant transplantation, isn't it? It's, <laughs> I'll try that one. We'll get it right before the end of the night. Um, because you're passing it on. So in the baton race, obviously, there's four people in that team. And for that journey to continue, one has got to carry it forward to pass on to the other. And then I was thinking about transplants. And I was thinking the importance of passing an organ on, whether that be a heart, a liver, a kidney, etc., means that somebody else's journey can continue. And I thought, what a beautiful connection between the two events this week. And the importance of what's connecting here and what happens is that somebody else's journey is able to continue. And just like that baton relay race that wins medals, being able to pass on an organ means that people will be able to have further successes in life. And I just love that connection because I think it just reminds us that life is all about people, it's about experiences, and it's about what we can do for others and how we interact with others. And following on from that, here we all are, here in this room this evening, connecting with each other, drinking some fine champagne or orange juice on the way in, and being able to celebrate the successes achieved so far. So firstly, I just want you to give yourselves a round of applause and each other a round of applause <laughs> for being here this evening and celebrating those successes already. Through our historical ties and friendships across the Commonwealth, we unite tonight in a noble effort to increase ethical donation and transplantation and save lives. I would now like to introduce you to Mr. Anthony Clarkson, Director of Organ and Tissue Donation and Transplantation with NHS Blood and Transplant to say a few words. Please put your hands together. Thank you, Phil. Dear colleagues, friends, um, new friends and old friends, welcome today to Edgebaston, uh, this amazing venue for the launch of uh, this fantastic collaboration. Today is going to be our own opening ceremony to mark the beginning of this ambitious, bold, and I hope powerful collaboration. Organ donation and transplantation brings out the very best of humanity, and in these challenging times for the world, bringing people across the globe together for a humanitarian effort like organ donation feels so needed at this time. We held our first part of the start of this collaboration uh, a, a few weeks ago in the Commonwealth Day. But that was just the first course, and this is our main meal. And I'm looking forward to what the night will bring as we become closer together for the benefit of our citizens 
that need a transplant. I've already had the pleasure of meeting some of our international colleagues that are here today, and I would like to very much welcome Professor Tan from Singapore, Dr. O'Shea from Barbados, Dr. Vasenti, Dr. Vasenti um, from India, and of course, our long-term friend, Dr. Sunil Shoff, who has been with us over the many years and actually sparked the life of this collaboration with a memorandum of understanding that we had with the Moham Foundation and which we signed probably about five or six years ago. We all have great hopes for this collaboration and we believe it will deliver many things. And what it will do, it will bring us together to learn together, to teach each other together, to collaborate together, and hopefully in doing so, we'll improve the lives of our citizens that need a transplant. We want to do that in an ethical way. We want to do that in a way that provides best practice. Um, and it's clear that we can all learn and share that best practice together. So I'd like our international guests, if they would stand up, those that I've mentioned, and we can give them a round of applause and start. <laughs> and we can start proceedings this evening. I'd also like to thank all of you for attending this event, those that have come far over from across the UK and those that are very local. It's, uh, it's an event at some stage in the last couple of years. We didn't know whether we would get together to be able to do it. And it's clear that, we, clear that we can now. And actually, there's nothing more powerful than being in the same room together. Zoom has been great and great for international collaboration. But actually, to be able to innovate, to be able to come up with those bright ideas that we can have across the Commonwealth, we need to be together. And it's great to meet you all tonight. So thank you very much. Phil. Okay, thank you very much, Anthony. Okay, we have some uh, beautiful guests this evening. Uh, but firstly, apologies from uh, our chair of the organizing committee, the Lieutenant, uh, Lord Lieutenant himself, John Crabtree, is under the weather this evening, so he will not be with us and sends his uh, humble apologies. However, we also have two other guest speakers. So I'd like you to put your hands together and give a very warm welcome to our first guest, Finlay of Landoff, uh, Chair of UK Advisory Panel, Baroness Finlay. Well, thank you so much. And can I add words of very warm welcome to everybody here today, all of you for your commitment to this important project, and particularly to those who are watching on our live stream event all across the Commonwealth. Of course, this is the Platinum Jubilee Year of Her Majesty, and the Commonwealth has been dear to her heart throughout the whole of her reign. And I think it's really important that we remember that because there has been a message of warmth, friendship, collaboration, sharing through good times and through bad times across the whole Commonwealth. And now we are facing the wonderful celebration of excellence. We will have excellence in the field of all of the Commonwealth Games, of all the sports. And we hope that through this project, we are also bringing excellence across the Commonwealth in terms of expertise, in terms of knowledge, in terms of how to do things really well, so that wherever people are across the Commonwealth, they can benefit from the sharing of knowledge. Those of you that have little ones at school uh, or grandchildren at school, I'm sure that you've all come across that phrase, sharing is caring. Why do we do this? Well, four years ago, 
uh, Dr. Sharma spoke to me, and within about 10, 15 seconds, we had agreed that we should have an event in the House of Lords to really think about this project and get it going. And I've had the privilege of chairing the UK committee for this over the last three years. And I've been able, therefore, to raise this project in Parliament. So if you search Hansard, you'll find a few references because I thought it was important that the government knew what we were doing and how we're sharing this expertise. There's been a whole team behind this, both here and across the whole Commonwealth. And it has been that friendship, that openness, and that sharing which has been really evident throughout all of our meetings to date. And we plan, and it isn't just a hope, but we intend the next five years to really be a legacy so that as well as the legacy from the games being here for the world of sport and for the city and all the fantastic things that are going on, that there is also a legacy which forms a foundation for really high quality ethical transplant, not only of kidneys, not only of heart lungs, but also tissues. In some countries, corneas and eyes are particularly important, particularly for children. Across the globe, there are lots of conditions where really transplantation transforms lives. It has to be done at the highest standard, and it is complicated and highly technical. And it is that expertise as well, which is our tribute to the lives of everybody across all the nations. So I hope that this project and this memorandum of understanding will be like a pebble, a large one, in a pond, and the ripples will spread out and that across the Commonwealth, people will pick up, if I can use your baton analogy, a ripple or a pebble and hand it on and make sure that those waves carry on across the whole of the Commonwealth so that we can all look back and in five years time know that we really made a difference and that this has really been a true tribute to life, tribute to the lives that are saved Tribute to those who, in their generosity, when the person they loved lost their life, decided to donate to help others live, live well and live fully. So thank you all for your support. Thank you all for the work that you've put in. And above all, thank you all for the work that you're going to be doing for the next five years to make this a really powerful legacy project. Thank you. Beautifully spoken words there. And may I say, I was looking at your dress whilst you was on stage, and it's beautiful. But what caught my eye about it is, at first I was thinking, that looks like beautiful leaves and flowers. And then I thought it looked like arteries as well. And I thought, the, the lovely connection between life itself. Uh, but very lovely, very lovely. Okay, th thank you very much. Uh, give it up one more time for the lovely Baroness Finlay, please. Now, our next guest speaker, we could almost say he's got the weight of the Commonwealth on his shoulders right now. He's definitely had his work cut out. Uh, I don't think just over weeks and months, but uh, years to bring us up to this very point of where we are right now, six days away from the Commonwealth Games, Birmingham 2022. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Okay, please put your hands together and welcome for Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Chief Executive, Ian Reid. Good evening, everybody. Um, yes, I'm afraid you've got the poor substitute this evening. Um, my chairman, John Crabtree, the Lord Lieutenant, um, was meant to be speaking this evening. He was well this morning and I actually spoke to him this morning and he was telling me how much he was looking forward um, to being with you this evening. He's a huge, huge supporter. 
and in awe of everything that's been achieved um, on the Commonwealth Tribute to Life um, project. So he just wants um, me to start by wishing you all well this evening and also his personal thanks to everybody involved in what you've achieved so far and in particular to you, Dr Sharma, and, and everybody involved. So, um, so you have me as a stand-in. I've had about two minutes to prepare, so bear with me. <laughs> Um, so, so what I'd like to start by saying is just quickly outlining the Games Association with the Commonwealth Tribute to Life project. So there's a logo behind me here um, on each of these stands called United by Birmingham 2022. And this is a project that's very much facilitated by our legacy team, of which I see one of our members, Claire, sitting over there tonight. And, and it's all around how do we make sure that the legacy of the Commonwealth Games here in Birmingham is very much delivered and owned and supported by organisations who are, who are delivering on the ground. So when we started this journey a few years ago, we made this um, asset available to a good number of groups and those numbers have grown and grown um, over the years as we've evolved and there's some incredible work being done from cleaning up canals to incredible community work, working with youth and that work will continue um, long after the Games um, is completed. But most of those projects, um, rightly so, are regional and working very closely with communities in the West Midlands. This is one of the few that I think we can genuinely say is working right across the Commonwealth. And to hear from Dr Sharma earlier on that well over 40 countries, I think, in the Commonwealth are already signed up to the project is a quite incredible achievement. And we hope that continues long after Birmingham 2022. Um, is completed and I'm sure the Commonwealth Games Federation and future games would be delighted to work with you um, in continuing um, that journey. So yes, we, uh, standing here in Birmingham, we are welcoming the Commonwealth as we speak. I was um, at Birmingham Airport and the Welcome Centre, as we call it, early, earlier today for the arrival of about our first 500 or so athletes. Um, they are here, they are in their tracksuits, they are um, delighted to be in the city and they've been taken to their village accommodation, the largest of which is just up the road um, at the University of Birmingham and have been delighted by the warm welcome that everyone in the city and the region has offered to them. And even in advance of those athletes arriving, we've had those kind of forward delegations, those officials um, coming here, getting everything ready for the arrival of the athletes. And again, they have been really singing the praises of, of everyone um, across the region. We do call the Commonwealth Games the friendly games, and it really is about connecting the Commonwealth. And I think that is the real strong link between the games and this project. This is a, you know, a real manifestation, the Commonwealth Tribute to Life project, of how um, Commonwealth countries can collaborate and really drive real benefit for citizens right across that Commonwealth family. And I think that you will see in, in real time over the next couple of weeks as the Games are delivered here in the region. Just a little update on where we are. So we're six days away from the opening um, ceremony at Alexander Stadium. Um, we have now sold in excess of 1.25 million tickets for the Games, um, which we hope will bring a huge number of people into the city and region and the city and region will um, genuinely benefit from the economic boost that that gives everybody but even as importantly as that we expect well over a billion people to be watching the games um, on television which again based on how incredible the city and the region looks I think hopefully will lead to that long-term economic and tourism benefit um, that we all hope it will deliver and see people coming back again and again to this um, incredible city. And Phil, you talked about the baton earlier. Of course, we have our own baton in the Commonwealth Games um, family. We have the Queen's baton, which left Buckingham Palace back in October. It has visited so far every single nation and territory um, in the Commonwealth, which is quite a Herculean feat that the team have achieved given the COVID restrictions and the fact that a team couldn't travel with them. So we've relied on every country to genuinely pass the baton um, to each other and host it and celebrate the Commonwealth. But we're delighted and perhaps most excited to have it back here now in the West Midlands, um, of which it will finish its, uh, with its uh, journey in the last two days here in Birmingham with an incredible celebration uh, in Victoria Square before travelling on to that opening ceremony um, where it, the, the message from the Queen will be read out. So I think that's probably all from me. Um, I hope a, a good number of you in the room get to experience the Games in person, or if not, um, please do try and engage with it on television, I'm sure there'll be something that will be um, particularly exciting for you to watch. 
Um, and I just wish everybody all the best in the, in the onward journey of Commonwealth Tribute to Life and you continue to achieve um, what you've done so far because I think it's miraculous what, what's been done in, uh, up to date. So thank you, Dr Sharma and everybody involved. Thank you. Bye -bye. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ian Reid. Lovely, passionate words as well. Doesn't it just make you get really excited? It's six days away. The eyes of the world are going to be on Birmingham and the West Midlands and everything that we can do. And just like talking, it's nice that the start off of that baton conversation has already gone into two other, com two other speech deliveries already. And it just shows how things can patch on. And uh, that's just the same with our energy. And when there's people coming from all over the Commonwealth to Birmingham and surrounding areas, and our energy, paying it forward, can make such a significant difference, just like passing that baton. Our positive energy, our communication, our warm welcome, as Ian mentioned, can make a huge difference. And I am really excited, as a proud Birmingham person, uh, as I'm sure many of you are here, to be a part of that journey and knowing that we're reaching out to our friends in the Commonwealth and being able to do just that. It's exciting, really exciting. Okay, uh, moving forward, I want to bring on stage uh, an amazing lady uh, who's got an amazing story and journey to tell. Uh, please uh, welcome to the stage uh, a young lady who had a heart transplant aged five, nine years ago. She spoke at the Commonwealth Tribute to Life launch event this March. And tonight she's going to tell you about her very special video. Please welcome to the stage, Makina Straker Sharp. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. Preparing my story from the start, I would have never really thought that I would be here amongst um, all of you speaking, especially not something that I would have really expected if you told a five-year-old that I would be doing this now. She probably would not believe you whatsoever and would probably think that you were all crazy. <laughs> uh, but what I'm about to show you next in this video is kind of showing everything that any transplant person would really experience and how they feel. Because I think most people, you don't really understand what the journey is really like until you've been through it yourself. And I think for me, that's exactly what I've been experiencing for the last nine years.
thank you, Makina. It's great to have you here with us this evening as well. Thank you for those kind words. Okay, moving swiftly on. Who's hungry? Okay, we're going to serve our first course. So uh, please enjoy your food. We'll be back with you imminently. But enjoy your starter. Have some conversation. It's all about making those connections. And also the bar is open. Enjoy.
organ failure and the need for transplantation is high across all nations, leading to the death of thousands of patients each year. With the help of the historical ties and established relationship of our Commonwealth nations, we aim to create a Memorandum of Understanding on Organ and Tissue Donation and Transplantation through which we can share knowledge and expertise. We believe that we can encourage transplantation in nations that have known, expand on previous success in nations that have established programs, address issues of health inequalities in transplantation, and protect vulnerable Commonwealth citizens against illegal and unethical transplantation. It is our hope that by doing this, we will save and transform the lives of those in need of transplantation across all social groups and ethnicities of the Commonwealth. We are inviting all Commonwealth nations to join this humanitarian effort. For more information, please visit www.odd.nhs.uk. I remember Dad's dance moves. His killer Tash. Dad was just a really happy character. But I also remember when they asked if he wanted to be an organ donor. And I just didn't know. Your loved ones will always be involved. Talk to them about organ donation. Leave them certain. I remember Dad's dance moves. His killer Tash. Dad was just a really happy character. But I also remember when they asked if he wanted to be an organ donor. And I just didn't know. Your loved ones will always be involved. Talk to them about organ donation. Leave them certain. I remember Dad's dance moves. His killer Tash. Dad was just a really happy character. But I also remember when they asked if he wanted to be an organ donor. And I just didn't know. Your loved ones will always be involved. Talk to them about organ donation. Leave them certain.
My name is Dale Gardner. Organ failure and the need for transplantation remains high in all nations. Unmet need can lead to the death of those on the transplant waiting list or commercially driven transplantation, which is to the detriment of both donors and recipients. Although international resolutions and declarations have called upon each nation to strive towards self-sufficiency in organ donation transplantation, to date, no nation has achieved this ambition. Donation rates vary across the Commonwealth from zero in some nations to 25 per million population in Malta. We believe that by using the historical ties and established relationships of our Commonwealth citizens and governments, progress can be made through the Commonwealth nations working together to share knowledge and expertise around organ and tissue donation and transplantation. That is why NHS Blood and Transplant, who are responsible for organ donation and transplantation in the United Kingdom, are developing the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding between supporting Commonwealth nations. But I will say you've been caught up in deep conversation. You've travelled a journey with new people or existing people that you've connected with. And journey is a beautiful part of our life, isn't it? Talking about part of our life and our journey, the reason why we're here this evening, who has made this happen? The Commonwealth, tribute to life. It takes a collection of people to come together to often make movement uh, and to achieve beautiful things. Just like we had Ian on stage, who's uh, part of a team heading up the Commonwealth. Ian's here representing this evening, but there's a huge team and even some uh, how many? 5,000 volunteers? 14,000. 14,000. Oh, I missed 9,000 out. <laughs> so, sorry about the other 9,000. 14,000 volunteers. It's a collective assemble of people wanting to achieve and shine and do great things together. A person with that vision is the next person I'm going to bring on stage. Satya Sharma, Dr. Satya Sharma. He has voluntarily given over 30 years to the promotion of organ donation. Tonight, sir, is your crowning achievement right here. As many of you know, 
Satya is the driving force behind the Commonwealth Tribute to Life project, and no one has worked harder than he to realise the project's success. Deputy, Deputy Lieutenant in the West Midlands and Chair of the Commonwealth Tribute to Life's project board, I present to you Dr. Satya Sharma, MBE. Good evening. Good evening. You can say louder if you want. <laughs> well, there you are. So, good evening. <laughs> when we started the journey, it felt like being in the middle of ocean. It really did. With a boat, but no shore, nothing visible, all around water. It was difficult. But there was a dream. And I must say, this project has turned out to be like no other. I knew that it was going to be difficult, but as they say, if it's not difficult, it's not worth doing it. The journey started the journey started about four years ago when I had discussions with John Crabtree, who can't be here tonight. He, was the, he is the Lord Lieutenant of West Midlands, and he was appointed the chairman of the organizing committee. So right place to start. Well, quite rightly, John asked me several questions, who, what, why, when, how. And those questions were answered to his satisfaction. And he came up with more questions. But frankly speaking, he has been a pillar of strength. In May 2019, we had an international symposium at Warwick University for the project, and Nithya Krishnan, who is a board member and happens to be in the audience, arranged it at Coventry. We dedicated half a day. A lot of people could not even pronounce memorandum before they started, but at the end, they were all singing songs of memorandum of understanding. <laughs> You heard that Bernice Finlay, it took about 15 seconds to discuss and agree that there should be a reception in House of Lords where the top team of NHS BT, which is NHS and Blood and Transplant, not NHS British Telecom. <laughs> the top team came along, and quite a lot of members are here tonight, and they were all supportive because there wasn't going to be any loser. It was going to be a project where it was win-win, nobody loses out. In February of 2020, we had first project board meeting, and two years later, despite pandemic, which brought its own difficulties, challenges, but it also provided opportunities, because we could talk to each other without having to travel, without having to spend time, and really just focusing on the part, because in the new scenario, we all know that if there is one hour, a lot of things get done within one hour. So two years later, we had launched the project in Wolverhampton, which as you know is epicenter of universe. <laughs> we have traveled quite a lot, and as we traveled, a lot of people came along, and it has been a teamwork, because as they say, if you want to go fast, travel alone. But if you want to go far, travel in teams. And in that journey, there have been lots and lots of people. And if I begin to thank everybody in person, you'll be here tonight and also for next weekend. But I know, they know who they are. And I also know that my saying thank you is not going to be good enough, because they've really done themselves and the whole of humanity a proud by being a part of the team. But there are a few names that I have got written here. Anthony Clarkson, who is here, he has been a strong supporter and he has continued to support and he has also said that we will carry on for next five years at least. I hope the project lives longer. Dale Gardner, what can I say about Dale? 
He's an associate medical director of NHSBT, and he's an amazing man. I say he's an amazing man because his productivity, his fact, factual knowledge, his passion reflects in the actions he takes. And a lot of the, my team members would understand if I say, Dale has done this despite me. <laughs> Baroness Finlay, thank you so very much for being a part of this journey from day one. And we enjoy your support. And we know that you've agreed to provide us support in the future as well. I talked about John, John Crabtree, Majid Mukadam. He's been a very valued member of the staff, a very, very valued member of the board for Tribute to Life. His support has been absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to say thank you to an amazing person who helped me lay the foundations of this project, Paul Sabapathy, former Lord Lieutenant of West Midlands. He's in the audience, and I must say his encouragement and his vision, his passion has been translated into actions and that has helped all the members of the teams, not me alone. Sunil Shroff, he is a dangerous man. <laughs> he is a dangerous man because wherever he sits, you start smelling organ donation. <laughs> wherever he stands, he talks about organ donation. If he's on phone, I can tell you 95% of times it's organ donation. When he sleeps, he breathes organ donation. And in his dream, he had a vision. Seven years ago, we had done a memorandum of understanding with Mohan Foundation. He's a managing trustee of that in Chennai. And that was to last five years. But within that five years, he said, why don't we do a Commonwealth memorandum of understanding? As if, you know, this is a small tennis ball which is to be lifted or perhaps a cricket ball which has to be made to go four or six. Easy, no problem. But it was his dream, and I'm very happy to have actually stolen the dream and fulfilled it. <laughs> I hope to your satisfaction, Sunil. We very quickly established the structure of the project. There was going to be a board. NHSBT supported it. And we thought that there should be some opening connection made by one particular panel. And we suggested that it should be UK advisory panel for Tribute to Life board. But what is it going to do if it is not going to involve the Commonwealth countries? Nothing. It can open the doors. But where do we go? So we wanted an international advisory panel for the Tribute to Life board. And the International Advisory Panel has been the key to success, and it will be the key to success in next few years to come, because this is the place where the work will be done. And you will see, because later on, Dale Gardner is going to talk about the new structure. And in the new structure, it will not only have a new name, it will have new enthusiasm, new passion, same people, but they'll be branded differently. They'll have to do a lot of work, but those, that work, I hope, will be the key to success of the project. For Tribute to Life board, we had membership which is listed. And I'm so pleased that a lot of our members are here tonight. And there were some co-opted members. Bernice Finlay came along very happily. Osahun Inabilele came from Nigeria. He is the president of Commonwealth Medical Association. And Chantal Bol from Department of Health. But we wanted to do it well. And therefore, there was a core team. And the core team was established very quickly with Dale Gardner, Holly Mason, who is here tonight. And we had three project managers. But interestingly, they all brought their own virtues to the board. And this core team would not have been without Cam Ray, who actually laid the foundation. Livia Torok, who can't be here tonight, made us go further, and Keelan Jones, is the man who has actually helped us in finishing the project up to this point where there is a new beginning. The UK advisory panel members, well, there's a long list. And these people have been absolutely crucial in introducing us to those areas where you would feel this is no-go area, not because of crime, 
but no go area because they have they're so busy people they, that it will be difficult for them to take something more on but these people they went and persuaded everybody and said it's well worth doing so drop something but do it this new project because this is well worth your while so what have we achieved as you heard we have got more than 40 we have in fact got 43 countries which have signed the mou which is 80 percent of the countries who are members of commonwealth in terms of the national membership there are 18 organizations supporting there are 15 organizations which have signed and three are yet to sign. If we had invited them to a dinner tonight, maybe we would have achieved that three as well. <laughs> Interestingly, these 43 countries represent more than 98% of the population of Commonwealth. So we have covered 2.5 billion people where it will reach. So why disparity? 80% countries, more than 98% population, why? The reasons were very simple. We have had some difficulties in Oceania and also some difficulty in uh, African countries. In African countries, the, the difficulty was that they felt that for the same amount of money, they can actually stop people from suffering due to floods, natural disasters, earthquakes, and that goes a long way. Very nice argument, reasonable, understandable. But our argument is and was that the government should be committed to saving each life which can be saved. And how much value do you put on one life? I don't think any life is cheaper than the other. We are all equal human beings. And we won quite a lot of African countries, but if you've got any connections, I can give you a list of just three or four countries which are yet to come. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when, because our perseverance, persistence, and your blessings are going to go a long way. In Oceania and some Caribbean countries, it was difficult because there are some countries which are so small. They've got populations of 21,000, 51,000. What chances have they got of creating transplantation? I'd suggest almost nil. But the interesting thing is that we felt passionately and we still believe that the Commonwealth citizens of those countries, they have got equal right of living and living to the full. And although they didn't even have facilities for dialysis, but our argument was they should get the best of best. That can be done through this project, and you will see in a minute how. But Commonwealth citizens can only get the best of best if and only if the health professionals are empowered. They are given the knowledge and the say and understanding of what is best of best so that they can advise their own citizens. And that argument has won number of countries. We are very pleased all Caribbean countries are, are members and we know that with time, the African countries and the, and the Oceania countries, when they see the success, they'll happily wish to join us and we'll welcome them because it's best to be late than never. We believe passionately that this is going to be a huge step towards achieving equality in terms of health services. Because what can be better than having equal access to transplantation. The 43 countries that we have on board, these are the flags of those countries. This is a list of those organizations which are within UK, the best of best in terms of organizations, and also equally within the Commonwealth countries. And again, these are best of best organizations which are really supporting us. And we are very pleased and proud that they are doing so. We wanted that at the time of inauguration, which is today, we wanted at least two outcomes which we should be able to count upon. And I'm very pleased to let you know that those two outcomes have been achieved. One is connectivity, because, the, because Bangladesh is connected with a named person within UK, Adnan Sharif. Namibia is connected with a named person in Pakistan and that will help them achieve the liver transplantation services. And Kenya is connected with a named person, Nithya Krishnan, a board member within UK. 
We have got regional coordinators and they make sure that within those continents, within those regions, if there are similarities, those are not lost. They are cashed upon, they share the similarities, but want to learn more from others who are probably a little bit further than them. There is no single country which has been able to achieve all performance indicators and become the best of best. There is none. But there are some countries which are good in some, and there are other countries which are good in others. And by sharing this success, we can all benefit from each other. The Memorandum of Understanding says, through the sharing of knowledge and expertise, we will increase ethical organ and tissue donation and transplantation, not transportation, regardless of transplant infrastructure for the benefit of, of all Commonwealth citizens. Now, what are, we going to, what are we going to do? Well, there are some of the things which we will not do. And one of the things which we, which we will not do is try and enforce it legally, because memoranda are really not the legally enforceable documents. They are arrangements between two parties of understanding, and this is based on goodwill. So we'll not be taking them to any court of law for any disputes. Another thing which we will not do is the financial commitment, because that is a slippery slope. If you talk about financial commitment, somebody will say, you should be spending that much, and I'm not spending that much, and I haven't got the money. So if you keep away from finances and ca count on goodwill, it's a winner. What we will not do or encourage is the transportation of organ because that's a slippery slope as well, because it causes difficulties. What we will willingly do is sharing of knowledge and expertise, and it will be in ethical realms which are recognized. WHO and Istanbul guidelines will be strictly adhered to. So what are we going to achieve? We'll share the guidelines and protocols. We'll have the best practice. But well, you could argue that all this can be looked at in websites. These days, it's no trouble in looking at the websites. What cannot be achieved through websites is connectivity. What cannot be achieved through websites is the reasons for success. That can happen only if there are personal connections where X speaks to Y and said, how did you do it? But if X and Y know each other, they'll share it willingly. If they don't know, then you can write as many emails as you like. And quite a few times, the emails addressed to the government, I'm afraid, may not be read, may not be acted, or may not even be shared with the right people. So we stayed away from that. And the connectivity and sharing success, reasons of success, is really the thing which we are going to bring through this project. I've already said this will be a huge step towards equality. And we think that it will be aiming towards the self-sufficiency, which may be further away. But if you don't dream, you don't get it. It's a good idea to dream. I'll let you read this. The dreams require effortless sleep, and aims require sleepless efforts. In the night, have a good sleep. Do dream. But in the day, do something to achieve those dreams. That's the only way we're going to get somewhere. So my friends, who is this for? What is it for? In one word, it's to create the culture to promote organ donation. And who is it for? It's for everybody in this room. It's for everybody outside this room. It's for everyone connecting virtually or face to face. And it's for everyone in the Commonwealth. So we hope that you all will be ambassadors of this project. And actually, you will be able to spread the message and the fragrance. I finish by saying, this is your, my, our tribute to life. Thank you.
I'm very grateful to you for this standing ovation, which I accept on behalf of the team and also on behalf of the project. Thank you. Not really sure how to follow that. <laughs> Absolutely beautifully passionate, informative, um, and the reason why we're all here this evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Satya Sharma. That was just beautiful, beautiful. Okay, there can be no transplantation without donation. From an altruistic gift, transplant patients have a chance at life. Jay and Sina Patel lost their little boy, Ari, in 2016. But he became a donor, saving the lives of others. We're going to watch a short video, and then we will have the special honor to hear from Ari's parents, Jay and Sina. He taught us how to be um, better human beings. He was only here for three and a half years, but I can truly tell you that he achieved more in his life than I think Sina and I can ever achieve in ours. I took the instant decision and said, please save every single organ you can. Allow us to donate his organs to other needed children. I don't think the consultant or the nurse expected that. I didn't feel at any point any pressure to have to do it, um, and I felt I could change my mind. The nicest thing about that time was they gave us 24 hours more with Ari. This is Ari's life, this wasn't our life to give. I kept on saying, tell us what you want to do, Ari. And maybe this was his way of telling us that you know, I've tried, and it, it wasn't enough, you know. Um, so, we, I think we've done the right thing. You know, I didn't realise how rare it is for children to donate their organs. I thought it was quite a normal thing to do. It's important that people think about decisions in a logical way. And that's why it was so easy, because it was really about Ari and what Ari would do to give back to others. His twin sisters have donor cards, mm -hmm. and they're proud of having them. We have a lot of amazing videos, memories, photos of him. But this one thing, I think, helps us heal. It helps us believe that Ari's life wasn't wasted while we lost our little boy. He donated his organs and we were proud of that. And Ari, I'm sure, lives on in others. Maybe the girl that has his heart has the same smile. I introduce Jay and Sina Patel. Um, thank you, um, Dr. Satya. We know you well, and uh, we appreciate the invite uh, to speak on behalf of our son, Ari. Um, we have been on a journey from 2016 um, which has taken us to numerous places. But uh, let me just uh, give you some insight into what that journey has been like. Um, there's one word that I always associate with Ari, and the word is proudy. Um, a week prior to Ari's accident, um, he said to uh, Sina's mum, he said, uh, 
nanny, I want to be, I want mummy and daddy to be proud of me. And um, if you come into our new house that's just been renovated, you'll see a huge neon sign and it's called Proudy. And uh, it helps us remember that, you know, we done the right thing by making that decision. And that decision was, was done, um, I think, in the context of, uh, of selfless um, gift. Um, Sina always thought about the impact uh, this would have on those parents like yourself um, that was waiting for a heart. And what are they going through? What's that child going through? We couldn't help Ari, but um, Ari could help others. And that gave us uh, some comfort. So, you know, I think, I think oh, we've never regretted that decision uh, for a day. And, and it was truly um, our decision. No one forced us to do that. Um, it was the right thing to do. Um, Sina and I had to have some help. I think losing a child is, is really hard. And I remember uh, the, our psychologist from St. George's telling us, um, you'll never get over this. Um, the pain will continue, but you will just learn to live with it every day. And we continue to learn to live with it every single day. Um, but it opened the door to, to something that we didn't know existed. Um, the NHSBT family, you know, people like Dale, people like Anthony, um, Holly, others in the room, you know, we didn't know this organization existed and we hadn't appreciated that um, people of ethnic minorities were, didn't consent to organ donation. You know, we are first generation British, we are Hindus um, by our ancestry. Uh, we practice and preach it, yet um, I think through our journey we changed every single one of my nine, my dad's nine siblings and my mum's five siblings and all the siblings of Sina's parents. There was a lot of people at Ari's funeral and, and I remember every single one of those um, saying that they would do the same um, if they were in the same circumstance. Um, so in, when we shot that video, it was March, it was four months after Ari had passed away. Um, and we started this journey with NHSB, NHSBT. Since then, we've gone on to do voluntary work all over the country. And um, I keep on telling everyone, you know, just tell us where to go and we'll, we'll speak. I don't mind. Um, we are very passionate about um, Ari. We have established new relationships, new connections. Um, we are on numerous committees. We're ambassadors for NHSBT. We um, serve um, uh, on a voluntary basis for an organization called JHOD, which, is, uh, uh, which represents Jain and, and Hindu um, um, uh, uh, minorities. Um, but I think, la before I hand over to Sina, let me just say one last thing. Um, it was important for us to understand what impact Ari's life had or, or as organs had on other people. And um, we, uh, you will see later on um, what legacy Ari lives. Um, and it gives us comfort that we know that those organs that were retrieved from Ari were used and for, for those children that um, we know are still alive today, so uh, it gives us great fa um, um, comfort that that's, that's still the case. I'll, I'll let Sina speak. Um. Okay. I'll try not to be too nervous, but I do apologise if I have a bit of a wobble. Um, so Ari's legacy. So obviously Ari's death has changed us, us as a, fa as two, as a couple, but obviously our wider family and our friends but we are able to be more open and honest about talking and dealing with death. We talk honestly with Ari's got uh, twin sisters. Uh, they're seven years old, they're younger than him. And we're able to talk honestly and openly with them about death. And Isla and Ash, uh, and we're able to talk honestly about the death of a loved one. 
but we're also able to explain about Ari's legacy. So Ari, being an organ donor, has provided us with, for me, for both of us, has provided us with a coping mechanism. And it gives us a different focus to losing Ari. And being a do donor family, for us, it consoles us. And it provides us with a degree of reassurance and comfort, knowing that he, that Ari, made a difference to someone. And he was able to leave his mark on this earth and is able to leave a legacy during a short time, he's three and a half years with us. I can honestly say our experience as a donor family has been wholly positive. And we do not, as Jay said before, never regretted a moment, our decision, uh, the decision that we made. Also recently, one of, one of our twin daughters, Asha, had to give a presentation to her class. And she decided to talk about her big brother, Ari and his gift of organ donation. How he donated his heart to a little girl and his liver to a little boy. But she was able to inform and normalize being an organ donor to the rest of the class. So we're hopeful that Asha and Isla will hopefully continue Ari's legacy and they can pass on that positive message of organ donation to others and they will not see it as a taboo subject and something that is not to be talked about. I think all of us in this room, we have our own story around organ donation and transplantation. We all come from different backgrounds, different cultures and countries, but we've gathered here for the same purpose, to increase awareness of ethical organ and tissue donation and to portray the same positive message to the wider, wider audiences and ultimately increase organ and tissue donation. So, um, thank you. One last note. If you see that picture of legacy, you will see a drawing. Um, that is from the girl that has Ari's heart. She is nine years old today, and um, her mum wrote to us three years ago. And I think I counted 32 thank yous on the note. Um, but the actual words are written from her and it says, thank you for my heart. And I think for us, um, it is that legacy. We are here, we're gonna celebrate the Commonwealth Games. I went to 2012, Sina was pregnant with Ari um, in London. And um, I think it's, it's important that we celebrate life um, and life in legacy. Like our son can't be here, but he's definitely smiling somewhere. So thank you for thank allowing you. us to do this. Um, and, and thank you for all the work that you guys do. We are very humbled by medical professionals and um, world organizations that have come together uh, to do this across the Commonwealth. And um, uh, if you want me to come to Singapore, I'll come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I bet you will. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, strong stuff and the difference that it makes. Uh, thank you once more, Jay and Sina, uh, and also Ari for what he continues to give to others. Amazing. Okay, uh, we'll move on from there. People of the Commonwealth, go and get yourself a toilet break or a drink or a bite to eat or put your head down for five minutes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what time it is where you are, but it's, uh, what time is it here in the UK? Quarter past nine in the evening here in the UK. So uh, it's time for our second course, uh, which I'm sure you'll all be pleased about, and we'll be back with you uh, with some entertainment, which I'll introduce during your meal. You're in for an absolute treat, and we'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. Enjoy. ...to lead to the sharing of knowledge and expertise in organ donation and transplantation. Our ambition is to launch the Memorandum of Understanding around the time of the Commonwealth Games being held in July 2022 in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. 
The Commonwealth Games provides a unique opportunity to promote organization transplantation, which could lead to the commencement or increase in this life-saving area of medicine across the Commonwealth. To be very clear, this memorandum is designed to provide a framework whereby Commonwealth nations may share their knowledge and expertise in organ and tissue donation and transplantation. It is not for the transportation of any organ, donor or recipient between nations and carries no legal or financial obligation to any supporting Commonwealth nation. It's an opportunity to share education materials, guidelines and policies and create a network across the Commonwealth nations of supportive experts. This is not the first MOU or Memorandum of Understanding in organ and tissue donation and transplantation between Commonwealth nations. I have seen the first-hand benefit that came from a previous successful MOU between NHSBT and Mohan Foundation of India. It was in teaching and mentorship, self-funded sabbaticals, and even in app development. There are many benefits that might arise for Commonwealth nations in joining the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding. It can expand and support existing successful programs. It might provide an opportunity to explore the potential for commencing transplantation in countries where it doesn't exist. It can support progress even in those countries where organ transplantation exists to higher levels, but where there is continued unmet need in more ethnically diverse communities. Importantly, it can protect vulnerable Commonwealth citizens against illegal and unethical transplantation. It would provide organ donation and transplantation practice that is in keeping with World Health Organization principles and standards. It can save and transform the lives of patients in need of transplantation. Birmingham Commonwealth Games in July 2022 provide the perfect opportunity to launch the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding as the Commonwealth comes together to celebrate life. Birmingham has got a strong history of supporting organ donation and transplantation. In 2018, Birmingham was awarded Transplant Sports' first ever Donor City Award in recognition of the city's commitment. Already, we have made substantial progress towards the Tribute to Life MOU we have created a project board, which I chair, and a UK advisory panel chaired by Baroness Finley from the UK House of Lords. The project has received active support across the Commonwealth from Australia and Canada, Barbados and Nigeria, Mauritius, Sri Lanka, Guyana, and many other countries represented on the project's international advisory panel. If you would like to know more or support the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding, please visit the project's webpage, which can be found at www.odt.nhs.uk. Of course, once the MOU is signed, your assistance will be needed in creating implementation groups, which deliver the ambitions of this worthy project and are the keys to success. Together, through the historical ties and established relationships that unite us in the Commonwealth, we can do more to share knowledge and expertise around organ and tissue donation and transplantation, which will result in many lives saved. Please support us in launching the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding during the Commonwealth Games being held in July 2022 in Birmingham.
Organ failure and the need for transplantation is high across all nations, leading to the death of thousands of patients each year. With the help of the historical ties and established relationship of our Commonwealth nations, we aim to create a memorandum of understanding on organ and tissue donation and transplantation through which we can share knowledge and expertise. We believe that we can encourage transplantation in nations that have known expand on previous success in nations that have established programs, address issues of health inequalities in transplantation, and protect vulnerable Commonwealth citizens against illegal and unethical transplantation. It is our hope that by doing this, we will save and transform the lives of those in need of transplantation 
across all social groups and ethnicities of the Commonwealth. We are inviting all Commonwealth nations to join this humanitarian effort. For more information, please visit www.odd.nhs.uk. I remember Dad's dance moves. His killer Tash. Dad was just a really happy character. But I also remember when they asked if he wanted to be an organ donor. And I just didn't know. Your loved ones will always be involved. Talk to them about organ donation. Leave them certain. I remember Dad's dance moves. His killer Tash. Dad was just a really happy character. But I also remember when they asked if he wanted to be an organ donor. You can take your seats as your main course is now being served and entertainment is about to commence. So please grab yourselves a seat.
Okay, if you haven't already, please grab yourselves a seat and please put your hands together and welcome the Adanta Afro-Caribbean Dance Group.
bring us here, and this is how we survive as a group. So every time somebody calls us, we owe the person a debt of gratitude. Wow. So thank you for having us. We'll do our best to make you so we can bring you to we'll try. You know, if you like it, please do clap for us. I'm just going to clap for us.
always good money to be here. <laughs> we were paid good money to be here. So we'll try our best to make sure we meet our own side of the budget. So if we owe you one act. Yeah. Um, by clap of hand, you know, sorry, I have to mention that, you know, this is where we share the dance with everybody. Mm. If, it's, if this is the kind of place, please, by clap of hand, let me know if we can do it. You know, if you clap for me, I'll know you want us to do it. Yeah. If you don't, we will do the pillars. But ideally, what we do in this end is the way we perform to non-Africans, we share a bit of the African culture with people. All we ask is you stand up. It's nothing very challenging. Just to have a feel of like that. So please clap for me if you want us to do it.
Remember, the first one is picking our phone. The second one is mobile phone. The third one is the snake. Okay, here we go. And I just didn't know. Your loved ones will always be involved. Talk to them about organ donation. Leave them certain. I remember Dad's dance moves. His killer Tash. Dad was just a really happy character. But I also remember when they asked if he wanted to be an organ donor. And I just didn't know. Your loved ones will always be involved. Talk to them about organ donation. Leave them certain.
My name is Dale Gardner. Organ failure and the need for transplantation remains high in all nations. Unmet need can lead to the death of those on the transplant waiting list or commercially driven transplantation, which is to the detriment of both donors and recipients. Although international resolutions and declarations have called upon each nation to strive towards self-sufficiency in organ donation and transplantation, to date, no nation has achieved this ambition. Donation rates vary across the Commonwealth from zero in some nations to 25 per million population in Malta. We believe that by using the historical ties and established relationships of our Commonwealth citizens and governments, progress can be made through the Commonwealth nations working together to share knowledge and expertise around organ and tissue donation and transplantation. That is why NHS Blood and Transplant, who are responsible for organ donation and transplantation in the United Kingdom, are developing the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding between supporting Commonwealth nations to lead to the sharing of knowledge and expertise in organ donation and transplantation. Our ambition is to launch the Memorandum of Understanding around the time of the Commonwealth Games being held in July 2022 in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. The Commonwealth Games provides a unique opportunity to promote organ donation and transplantation, which could lead to the commencement or increase in this life-saving area of medicine across the Commonwealth. To be very clear, this memorandum is designed to provide a framework whereby Commonwealth nations may share their knowledge and expertise in organ and tissue donation and transplantation. It is not for the transportation of any organ, donor or recipient between nations and carries no legal or financial obligation to any supporting Commonwealth nation. It's an opportunity to share education materials, guidelines and policies and create a network across the Commonwealth nations of supportive experts. This is not the first MOU or Memorandum of Understanding in organ and tissue donation and transplantation between Commonwealth nations. I have seen the first-hand benefit that came from a previous successful MOU between NHSBT and Mohan Foundation of India. It was in teaching and mentorship, self-funded sabbaticals, and even in app development. There are many benefits that might arise for Commonwealth nations in joining the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding. It can expand and support existing successful programs. It might provide an opportunity to explore the potential for commencing transplantation in countries where it doesn't exist. It can support progress even in those countries where organ transplantation exists to higher levels, but where there is continued unmet need in more ethnically diverse communities. Importantly, it can protect vulnerable Commonwealth citizens against illegal and unethical transplantation. It would provide organ donation and transplantation practice that is in keeping with World Health Organization principles and standards. It can save and transform the lives of patients in need of transplantation. Birmingham Commonwealth Games in July 2022 provide the perfect opportunity to launch the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding as the Commonwealth comes together to celebrate life. Birmingham has got a strong history of supporting organ donation and transplantation. In 2018, Birmingham was awarded Transplant Sports first ever Donor City Award in recognition of the city's commitment. Already, we have made substantial progress towards the Tribute to Life MOU we have created a project board, which I chair, and a UK advisory panel chaired by Baroness Finley from the UK House of Lords. The project has received active support across the Commonwealth from Australia and Canada, Barbados and Nigeria, Mauritius, Sri Lanka, Guyana, and many other countries represented on the project's 
International Advisory Panel. If you would like to know more or support the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding, please visit the project's webpage, which can be found at www.odt.nhs.uk. Of course, once the MOU is signed, your assistance will be needed in creating implementation groups which deliver the ambitions of this worthy project and are the keys to success. Together, through the historical ties and established relationships that unite us in the Commonwealth, we can do more to share knowledge and expertise around organ and tissue donation and transplantation, which will result in many lives saved. Please support us in launching the Tribute to Life Memorandum of Understanding during the Commonwealth Games being held in July 2022 in Birmingham. our third part of this fantastic event, Commonwealth Tribute to Life, this evening. If you'd like to grab yourselves a seat, get yourselves comfortable, and we'll be commencing imminently. Hi to people of the Commonwealth. Hope you're enjoying this at home or in the office, wherever you may be. Okay, going on with our fantastic evening. Is everybody having a good time? Yeah. How, was the, uh, how was the dancing? Didn't they just have fantastic energy? If, if I knew we were going to be doing that dancing, I don't think I would have eaten so much chicken, to be honest. <laughs> but what fantastic, what lovely energy they had. Uh, and as we said at the start, it's all about meeting people and sharing energies. And we certainly felt their energy coming across with that powerful, fun, uh, enigmatic style. Okay, uh, before we go on to our dessert, yes, there is dessert. It'll be coming shortly, or pudding, as some may call it. Uh, I want to welcome to the stage uh, a fantastic man, Dr. Dale Gardner, Associate Medical Director in Deceased Organ Donation with NHS Blood and Transplants and Chair of the Commonwealth Tribute to Life International Advisory Panel. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Dr. Dale Gardner. Thank you, Phil, and thank you, everyone, for joining us on this really auspicious and very, very special night as we begin and mark five years with our Memorandum of Understanding. So Satya shared with you the dream of a boat, and it was looked initially like, where is this boat going? You know, where can we take this project? And I remember speaking to the Lord Lieutenant John Crabtree about why this project should be part of the legacy of the Commonwealth Games. And we said, we want to establish the first Commonwealth and organ and tissue donation transplantation community. All of us, all across the Commonwealth, all together as a first community of experts and people enthused by this project. And by this date, we wanted a majority of Commonwealth countries to have joined us. Well, I think you can see that we have well and truly achieved that purpose. We are a community of experts, enthused, motivated, committed to this humanitarian effort of saving lives and transforming lives through donation and transplantation. And we have actually got 43 out of the 54 Commonwealth countries involved. <laughs> so, 
So the need is great, though. When you look at that map, this is our Commonwealth, all those nations highlighted there. That's the Commonwealth all across the world. But if you look at that same sort of diagram, looking at the number of deceased donor, donate, donors that are occurring, you will see the massive gap in that on which countries you in the previous map were donating, which part is now. And there's so much more we can do. There's also many countries that, aren't, that may have a program that aren't reporting it to sort of the global observatory so we can actually sort of support each other and gather that data. If we change the graph to living donation, you will see also it's slightly better, but it's still a long way to, get to go. And what does this mean to the people in the Commonwealth? It means that people are dying, waiting for a, a transplant, dying on dialysis, not even having an opportunity for dialysis. And also it means that people are seeking out unethical ways to actually have an organ. So we have to stop that. And we have to grow deceased donation and living donation all across the Commonwealth to meet this terrible need that there is. And we have a plan. And you're part of that plan, and you're part of that plan tonight by joining us in this Commonwealth Tribute to Life. This was the structure we had, and its job was to get us to this point, this point tonight, and it has achieved that with actually a Commonwealth community of experts as well as a majority of Commonwealth countries joining us on this project. But what comes next? Because this has almost just been the entree. This is actually where we actually take things forward and actually deliver something really quite special over the next five years. And I'll tell you tonight, this is the future structure for this project. We are going to start a Commonwealth Tribute to Life custodian board and also a Commonwealth Tribute to Life international implementation group. We're going to take those two groups that you saw in the initial structure, the Tribute to Life board and the UK advisory panel, bring in our six regional coordinators from across the Commonwealth and begin a custodian board. And those that actually know the Declaration of Istanbul and the Istanbul custodian group, you will see sort of the replication of that. And they will help to guide this project over the next five years and make sure that we deliver on our promises tonight. And I'm very pleased to announce that uh, Baroness Finlay has agreed to be the patron of this new group. And for no other per person could I think could chair this but Sacha Sharma. And uh, Anthony Clarkson has is, is kindly joined us in, in support of this. We have uh, Ossetan um, from the Commonwealth Medical Association and the six regional coordinators as our initial membership of this custodian group to ensure that we deliver on what we're setting out and promising tonight. So I want to give a round of applause, especially to the, those people. <laughs> Their role very much is to oversee it. But that's, they need some workers. They need some worker bees. And this is what I think is very clear is the Commonwealth Tribute to Life International Implementation Group. Not just talking about this project, but delivering it. And we're going to focus on making the most of, to, of what we've agreed tonight. And uh, it's going to have an executive, which will be made up of the six regional coordinators from across the Commonwealth, representing all the continents. Uh, one of those will act as chair, and we'll have, bring in the members, all of our, our 43 international advisory panel members will be members of that. All of our 18 supporting organisations will be members of that. And um, we've got a commitment from NHS Blood and Transplant to support this project through the next five years so we can actually really sort of bring out and, and motivate this. It's not just, though, about these two groups. Because actually, if, it, if we have a memorandum, as you can see, and you've held and had photograph of it, of it, and it sits in a cupboard, it will do nothing. And we actually really need people within their own country and in their own regions to start their own implementation groups. And that's what we learned with NHS Blood and Transplant and the Moen Foundation's uh, memorandum from seven years ago. We each had a, a Mohan implementation group and an NHS Blood and Transplant implementation group. 
and that's what delivered actual purpose and actually achievements and things we can look back and go, we did that because of this. Not because of a memorandum, but because of the motivation of people in those groups. So I'm calling on everyone in the Commonwealth to start up your own implementation group. In some countries, it may just be two or three people committed together. In other countries, there might be a whole committee with project managers and other aspects. But that's the way we will succeed if we actually implement this project. And this is our promise for the next few years, or at least in the, in the short term as we even go more ambitious than this is we want to make our website the home for people to find out this information. We have delivered since March and uh, now 20 world-class lectures on organ donation and transplantation. We want to make sure that they're spread further. So if you haven't seen them, they are incredibly powerful, better than any conference I've been to in decades. So it's a really, really good resource. We need data. Everything's in our data. We need to know baseline data about Commonwealth uh, transplantation, donation rates, basic things. We need to work with our regional coordinators, and uh, some of them are here tonight, which is so delightful. And we want to have more webinars, more teaching, and particularly Commonwealth Day, which you may not have known, is the second Monday in March every year. Yep, pub quiz, it is. And uh, <laughs> we want to make that a very special day. That was the day of our launch back in March in Wolverhampton. We want to make that the day where we all come together as a commonwealth and celebrate this and actually, more importantly, work forward on the next year. Thank you for joining us on this because, as Satcher says, get on board this boat. It is going places. We all need to work together. Thank you very much. Back to speech. Thank you for that. One more time, give it up, Dr. David, uh, Dr. Dale Gardner. If international organ donation and transplantation has a name, then that name is Dr. Sunil Shroff. Sunil is a senior consultant, urologist, and kidney transplant surgeon, and the founder and managing trustee of the Mohan Foundation in India whose memorandum of understanding with NHS BT form the model and the template for the Tribute to Life project. Sunil is the current president of the Indian Society of Organ Transplantation, and he has been powerhouse in growing deceased donation and transplantation in India. His influence, friendship, and dedication is felt across the world. Within this project, he is the Commonwealth Tribute to Life's coordinator in Asia, and we are so grateful you are present in person tonight. Uh, can I give a vote of thanks to Dr. Sunil Shroff? A very good evening to all of you here, gathered here. It's such a privilege and honor to propose this word of thanks on behalf of the Commonwealth Group of Advisors. Satya called me dangerous, but what I have seen is a lot of danger when organ donation doesn't happen and many lives are lost. And that's what perhaps propelled me towards this cause of organ donation when I went back to India after having spent 12 years in England. At the outset, you know, I wish to thank the donor families who have made the organ donation happen. And without that, we would not be here. Khalil Gibran said that you give but little when you give of your possessions, you truly give when you give of yourself. And I thank Jay and Sina for sharing this story here, for inspiring us, for doing more. And we need to do more, especially in the Commonwealth countries. I, we are hugely privileged to have the mayor of Birmingham, mayor of Wolverhampton, and the mayor from Telford and Rickham, 
and uh, the CEO of Commonwealth Games, Ian Reid. Satya has given me a difficult job to propose a word of thanks because I'm a little outsider. And some of your faces are very familiar, but I don't remember your names, so forgive me. And my apologies if I don't take your names individually. For something like this to happen, for you know, many, for you know, people to come together, it has it was only possible when Banners Finlay and Lord Lieutenant uh, Paul Sabapati, you know, supported us in this cause uh, which we are taking forward with the Commonwealth. I wish to also thank, you know, the team of Satya and Dale. They say that coming together is a beginning. Keeping at it is progress. Working together is success. And this coming together is truly has been possible because Satya and Paul, Satya and Dale complement each other so well, along with their team of people who work with them, help them, includes Majid, Nitya, Keelan, Paul, and I think Laurie. Laurie? Laurie's probably not here, but he's been sending a lot of mails. So thank you all for helping us in this endeavor. At Mohan, we are now 25 years into the service of organ donation. And I think uh, this tribute to life has been truly a privilege for us to be associated with. And thank you for including us in this, in this uh, noble kind of endeavor. After I finish, I think I've spoken enough, but after I finish, you'll have the Punjab dance of Bangla. And Bangla is a dance of festival. It uh, is a dance to invite spring, to invite new life, to invite transformation. And I do hope that this Tribute to Life project of Commonwealth will bring new life, a lot of hope, and transform many lives in the Commonwealth countries, which are struggling with the cause of organ donation. So thank you very much, and good night to all of you. I believe it's now time for Lions of Punjab. We may be slightly ahead because it does say tea and coffee, so <laughs> it may be just a good opportunity to tuck into dessert. So while I'm just waiting for the for the oh they're here. They're here, there we are. So as introduced, please put your hands together and welcome some very special entertainment, some bangra for you from the Lions of Punjab.
has captured the hearts of millions around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the lions are coming. Lions up and
निशानी
What a way to finish the evening, ladies and gents. I'm sure you will agree, it's been an incredible night. Please put your hands together for the Lions of Punjab. And in fact, for everybody else that got up on the floor, put your hands together, because that was some going, that was, really was. Okay, as we wrap things up, just to bring this to a close, thank you very much. Spread the word. You know the great work that is being done. Uh, you was here this evening for Commonwealth Tribute to Life. 
So many important people that have made this happen, including each and every one of you in the room here this evening. Uh, a big thank you to everybody involved, and in particular, uh, who's invited me here this evening, Dr. Satye Sharma, ladies and gents. Thank you to the right worshipful Lord Mayors, the Mayors, and everybody else. My name is Phil Aldershaw, and uh, have yourselves a great journey home, and enjoy the Commonwealth Games 2022. Uh, thank you very much to all the Edgebaston staff, catering, tech crew as well, and all the entertainment this evening. Thank you very much. Good night.